Hi guys, welcome to lecture number three. This is Introduction to Computer Science and we're still talking about information layer and this time we're talking about data representation. Alright, first we want to realize is that the natural world is continuous and infinite, which means that for example in the number space between any two numbers is a finite number of numbers and any number can be divided in half. In the computer world, the world is discrete and finite, which means that there's a limit to how much information can be represented and it also must be represented in very discrete baskets of information. Data in a natural world is represented as analog, which is a basically a continuous representation of data. For example, what are the numbers between 1 to 10? There's actually an infinite number of numbers between 1 to 10, so there's, there's not a finite set of numbers between 1 and 10, it's, it's infinite. However, in the computer world, everything is digital, which means that it has to be a discrete representation of analog data. For example, what are numbers between 1 to 10? And the discrete representation is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. It's, it's very discrete, which means that it's not continuous, which means it's not infinite like in the previous case. The process to convert between analog data to digital data is called digitizing. So if I want to take an analog signal and I want to convert it to a digital signal, I must digitize it. By definition, you can define it as the act of breaking an analog data into discrete elements. These discrete elements are represented by binary digits. All right, so in this lecture, we're going to be talking about different ways of converting these five types of information. We're going to be talking about numbers, positive and negative numbers. In the past lecture, we just talked about just positive numbers. We're going to talk about text. We're going to talk about audio, we're going to talk about images, and we're going to talk about video. Video is kind of special because video is kind of a mixture of, of audio, excuse me, of images and audio. Before we talk about this, so one, for first, one digit can represent two things. It can represent only two things, actually. So, for example, let's classify food as being sweet or sour. So, zero can represent sweet one can represent sour. So now with just zero and one I can make that representation. Now two digits can represent four things. For example, if we're going to classify food as being sweet, sour, spicy, or hot. So sweet can be zero zero, sour can be zero one, and spicy can be one zero, or hot can be one one. So we've got one, two, three, four things that can be represented with these two digits of binary information. So what do you think? If I got n bits of information, I can represent two to the n things. Look, two to the one is two things. Two to the two is four things. Two to the three, eight things. Notice every time you, you, you raise the digit, two to four, two to five, two to six, it doubles the number of things you can you can represent. So for example, 2 to the 32, that's basically how big most computer systems are in terms of how much information they represent. So 2 to the 32 can represent over 4 billion things. All right, now let's talk about numbers. And we're going to talk about positive and negative numbers. First of all, let's represent the numbers negative 4, negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, and 3, all in binary. To do this, we're going to need three bits because we're trying to represent eight things. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So it's eight different things we got to represent. Now, with eight different things with three digits, this is how you write it out. And notice it's actually a sequence and a pattern to how you write these numbers out in the right sequence. So as you write them out in order, you'll get used to them. So here's the process. Let's watch it. First things first, we take the upper half, which is which is composed of all the zeros in the front, and then we flip it. Notice the zero here, the one one is down there, this is now here, and this is now here. We've, we've basically, we've, we've flipped this top part now. The next thing we want to do is we're going to flip the bottom part. So notice the one one was down here, and now it's up here. Or the, this one zero zero was up there, and now it's down here. So we flip the bottom part now. Now that we flip the bottom part, the next thing we'll do is one is assign the number space. We're going to start with a positive 3 and we're going to assign it at the top. And then we're just going to follow down with all our assignments. So notice because we're using positive and negative numbers, 111 in a normal sense would equal to 7. But in this space where we got to represent positive and negative numbers, 111 is actually equal to negative 1 and not 7. 
All right, so what about addition and what about subtraction in this new number system? Let's look at it. So if I'm doing 1 minus 4, that's actually a negative 3. And let's see how we can get this. We can get it by simply saying, let's just do addition. So it's really 1 plus a negative 4 equal to negative 3. So basically, subtraction can be represented as adding a negative number. All right, so let's look at this in, in our new number system. 1 minus 4. So 1 minus 4 is equal to 3, of course. But let's see how we can, we can set this up. Set this up. So what we're going to do is 1 plus a minus 4 instead of 1 minus 4. And the 1, look at our number table. 1 is 0, 0, 1. So we'll put that there. And negative 4 is here. So we'll put it there. Once we add these two numbers together, we get 1, 0, 1. And 1, 0, 1, look back at our number system, is actually equal to negative 3. So we see we have a we have a match in this number system now if we were to add two numbers they were outside the system so say for example if I was trying to add 3 plus 3 3 plus 3 is actually so for example 3 plus 3 is 6 and notice 6 is nowhere in this number system which means that 3 plus 3 is actually not 6 in this number system it's actually something totally different and so if we did it really quickly here I'm gonna try to write that out 3 is that and add another 1 1 1 all right so we're doing some interesting stuff here so 1 plus 1 is equal to 0 1 carry to 1 1 plus 1 plus 1 is equal to 1 1 carry to 1 and we get 1 0 1 so 1 0 1 in this space is actually equal to 2 instead of 6 because like in this space everything wraps around all right let's move on Next, we're going to talk about how do we represent text. First of all, a text document can be de decomposed into paragraphs, sentences, words, and characters. And characters are the smallest unit, so that's what we're going to represent in our binary number system. All right, so first of all, um, there's an ASCII character set that the entire world has agreed on is going to represent every single character in an English-based language. And so it stands for American Standard Code for Information Exchange and allows for 8 bits of data. So if I got 8 bits of data, so 2 raised to the 8 means I got space for 256 characters. Because remember, we're going to represent characters. So characters are going to go to decimal numbers. And decimal numbers, we're really just talking about base 10 here when we talk about decimal numbers. And then that's going to go from decimal numbers, and that's going to go into binary, which is it's kind of it's kind of crazy how I write on the screen, huh? It's base two. So we're going to go from characters to decimal to binary. That's just that's the process. All right. So on this table, you can look and you can see that this has a mapping from every single character in the English language to an actual number. So my first letter, my name starts with an A. So if I look at the table. I see that A is represented by 65. The next letter in my name is a lowercase m, and I notice that the lowercase m is represented by 0, 1, 0, 109, basically. And the O is represented by 111, and the S is represented by 115. Now, if you notice, the numbers 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 are also remapped into to a different number to, for consistency. So, for example, if I want to know what 5 was, 5 is actually 53 in the reading mapping system because 5 is not really mathematics. It's just a character on the screen at this point. Now, if I was trying to do, let's see what else is on here. If I was trying to do the at sign, the at sign is represented by 64. And 32, you see how there's nothing next to 32. 32 is actually a space. Now, there's some characters here that you don't see anything next to because they're, they're invisible characters. Or there may just be nothing there in that, in that, that sense. But I know 32 is actually a space or you look at the uh, I guess it's a cross sign that's that's 16 right there so or the the registered uh, trademark and a registered copyright symbol these are all different symbols you can represent just by converting them into actually numbers all right let's move on 
All right, let's take my name again, Amos, A-M-O-S, capital A. Oh, let's go back. Notice the capital letters and the lowercase letters have different number representations. Okay, move forward. All right, Amos, A-M-O-S. All right, first thing you do is take my name, break it down to single characters. For each character, you look up what number is represented on the table. So remember, capital A is actually 65. The next thing you got to do is you got to take 65 and you got to convert it to binary using our steps. So 2 goes into 65 32 times, you get a 1. 2 goes into the 32 16 times, so you get a 0. 2 goes into 16 8, zero, eight times, you get a 0. 2 goes into 8, you get a 4, and you get another 0. Remember, you keep going until this top number becomes 0. So 2 goes into 4 2 times, and you get a 0. And 2 goes into the 1, 2 goes into 1 time, you get a 0. 2 goes into 1 0 times and you get a 1 and we stop because now we at the 0 spot. So this is our binary number. Remember we got to flip it though, right? It's got to go in reverse even though this number in reverse is the same thing. Now remember we said that ASCII is using 8 bits so if we count this out that's only 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So because it's only 7 we got to add an extra 0 to make it 8 bits long. Now we do the exact same thing with all the other letters in my name. So lowercase m is 109 which converts into this 8 bit number. Uh, lowercase 0 is 111 which converts into this 8 bit number. And lowercase s is 115 which converts into this 8 bit number. And then you put it all together in a sequence and you have my name in, in binary. And so you can do this any word in the English language. Just take it, break it down by the character, look up the number it's associated with, convert that number to binary, and just add them, just write them out in, in a sequence. You also can go in the other direction. So what is this word? Remember we said that every 8 bits is a different character, so basically we can just break it up into 8 bits. And once you break it up into 8 bits, the next thing to do is take each 8 bits section and determine what number that corresponds to. Remember in the previous lecture I showed you how to go from binary to base 10. And once you have the characters, once you have the excuse me, once you have the, the numbers, then you just look it up on the ASCII table and you find out what the, the corresponding letters are and you have the word pat. And that's the process. Very simple, isn't it?